do not bear false witness. Welcome to episode 64 of Anglican Catechesis, where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. Today we'll be covering questions 339 through 348 of To Be a Christian in Anglican Catechism, the official catechism of the Anglican Church in North America. I'm Father Kurt Hine, Rector of Light of Christ Anglican Church in Georgetown, Texas, joined today by my co-catechist, Father Isaac Rayberg, Rector of All Saints Anglican Church in San Antonio, Texas. But before we begin, let's start with prayer. This is number 75 in the occasional prayers for holy thought. O God, without you, O God, without whose beauty and goodness our souls are unfed, without whose truth our reason withers, consecrate our lives to your will, giving us such purity of heart, such depth of faith, and such steadfastness of purpose, that in time we may come to think your own thoughts after you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Yeah, I love that. That in time we may come to think your own thoughts after you. So it's a good one. Yeah, it's a reminder to me that Christianity is not about behavior modification. Right. But it's about us being molded as complete persons into the image of Christ. Yeah, because as, as, as important as that those right deeds are, they don't come without a, a right change of heart or right thinking. They're, they are the, uh, the product of the change that happens, not the cause of the change. Right. So more than simply... Um, not lying, as we'll get into. It's about having a heart that loves the truth. Yeah, exactly. Loves exactly. the truth because God is true. That speaks the truth as as God is has spoken truth to us and and understands it. It's truth that liberates, and it's That's truth it. that brings life. So, well, that's good. So, three thirty nine. What is the ninth commandment? The ninth commandment is, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. 340, what is bearing false witness against your neighbor? It is to willfully communicate a falsehood about my neighbor, either in legal or in other matters, in order to misrepresent them. Yeah, misrepresent. Um, it's not just a legal issue, but it, it's uh, any, any falsehood can willfully communicated to misrepresent. Yeah, that mis that idea of misrepresenting is is really important. Yeah, this happens a lot. It happens in gossip. It happens, like you said, in legal matters. Um, it's interesting the motivations behind this. It can um, even happen presenting, you know, what what someone that you're in disagreement with says in the worst possible light. And how often do we see that? Oh, well, they'll just. This isn't technically a lie, yeah, but it is a misrepresentation. You know, that's that's not that's not the right thing. Yeah, mis misrepresenting someone in order to um, manipulate things for your own advantage. Um, sometimes we do it just to feel better about ourselves. Yeah, briefly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is often the case. All too often the case. Can't stand that someone else is doing well. <laughs> so, yeah. So question 341, why does God forbid such false witness? Because it defames and wounds my neighbor, erodes my love of truth, disobeys my Lord Jesus, and aligns me with Satan, the father of lies. Ooh, we are not holding back our punches on this one. Yeah, that got serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it, it hurts our neighbor. Our neighbor needs the truth. The truth is good for them. But if we uh, tell falsehoods about others, if we tell falsehoods to to people, it it wound, it wounds them. And it, but it also not only hurts them, but it hurts us. Right? Yeah. There's a damage we're inflicting upon our own soul that when we speak a falsehood, it erodes our love for truth, and it can get to the point. But if you lie a lot, that you even forget how to know the truth yourself. Oh yeah, I, I've yeah, so yeah. seen this where your people believe their own lies and they're they uh, they they just twist it and twist it and twist it and they come to convince themselves of those lies. Oh, that's a terrible place to be. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, it's really bad because the truth is your friend. I mean, even the hardest truth is your friend, right? Because right. if if you don't know the truth and you don't know how to to respond in the best possible way, and uh, yeah, reality is your friend. Um, 
in that case. So, uh, and then let's not forget, you're disobeying the Lord, Jesus. That's a big deal. And it aligns you with Satan. The father of lies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a name that um, our Lord gave him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, we we don't we don't want to be in. Uh, not only you're disobeying Jesus, but you're jumping into the other camp, and that's a bad, bad thing. We must be people of the truth, and this is really important today. I think we'll get into some specifics here, but I'm looking up John eight forty two, and I believe that he says, um, "You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him." When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Mm. Yeah, let's let's not be people whose character is to lie. That's a oh what what a, what a terrible description. Are you up or am I up next for, for this? Uh, oh, um, I think I am. Um, right, uh, three forty two. How is false witness given in public life? Any willful misrepresentation of the truth in legal, civic, or business affairs bears false witness, rebels against God's will, and subverts God's justice. Yeah, God, God is interested in um, justice in the civil, legal, and business world, not just in the church world. Like his justice. Um, his call for justice goes through all parts of life. Um, we can't we can't compartmentalize things and think that that's going to please the Lord. No. So uh, Proverbs eleven, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is His delight. Mm -hmm. uh, that ancient practice of having a balance, where you would weigh people's money or you would weigh people's we weigh whatever you're selling. And of course, a, a quick way to make more money is to uh, mess with that weight. So it's not yeah. quite accurate. Not, um, not such a, it's not, to, not such a point that it can be recognized, but to such a point is that it does pad your, your wallet. And there are many, yeah. many ways to do this in the modern world in business transactions in public life. And uh, when we do this sort of thing, uh, we're really hurting ourselves, we're hurting our neighbors and we're, and we're, keeping the the entire system right from being able to flourish as it as it ought to flourish the community Tra transparency is important doing things the right way is important um because that's that's the way that a, a good society that god wants the flourishing to happen in happens yes yeah the the, the foundation of a society that flourishes is trust and unless people are telling the truth to each other there can't be that trust and if there, if that trust is eroded to a particular point, on um, the forms of government we have are impossible. So, yeah, and isn't isn't that a big part of the problem we're having right now? Is that trust is so lacking, and for for very good reasons. It's not um, it's not just uh, people being paranoid, but those in whom we should have trust have betrayed that trust so often that that we're beginning to become a very cynical society, and that is dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. I, uh, sometimes I don't think people understand exactly how dangerous it is, but we need to find ways to restore trust to do it because truth is being told for there to be transparency. And uh, unless that be, unless that happens, um, like I said, a society cannot flourish. And, and part of what that means needs to happen is we need to recover an understanding as a society, as a culture, as a people, that there is such a thing as true. Mm. No, there's not my truth and your truth. No, there is the truth. Right. And and we need to be faithful to it. Reality, as you said, is your friend. Yes. And there there have been um leaders in our in our government who have said explicitly that they told lies because they thought it was for the good of of the country. That is a well, uh, like our catechism says, a very satanic road to go down. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the truth is good. And, and so, yes, there needs to be a restoration in the idea of objective truth, but also a repentance, a repentance, a yeah. public repentance of people who have lied to us. 
and um, there that would be the beginning of uh, yeah of rebuilding trust. Question three forty three: How is false witness given in respect to the teaching of the church? All false or misleading teaching concerning the Christian faith bears false witness against the truth of God's word and abuses the authority given by Christ to his body. Mm. Um, we, we, we need to be able to, uh, as, as ministers, as preachers, um, we need it. We need to be, to be above reproach in this regard. Um, since we are that public voice so often and, um, and 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 that means sometimes we do need to be honest about some of the skeletons in the, in the closet of the church. You know, we we don't sweep things under the rug, don't don't pretend you know everything is fine when it when it isn't. Um, don't pretend that the way it's always been quote quote is really the way it's always been because it hasn't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> be honest about about those things. You know, no no no, no church is without its errors or your articles of religion um, affirm this. And so that means we should be willing to see the errors in our own churches and in our own tradition um, when they happen and repent from that. Right. We need to be a church that's always reforming toward the objective truth. Right. Sometimes right. that means going back to something. Sometimes that means moving forward from something that we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. But this is this is really important. There's also a humility then that we need to have as leaders of God's church because we're going to mess up. Right. Um, we're also in formation towards the truth. And so we will teach things that aren't right. And we need to have ears to hear when people bring us back to higher authorities than ourselves, right? They say, hey, look at the scripture here and look at what um, the teachers of the church for the last 2,000 years have taught on this. And... Um, we need to have open ears to that. And, yes. and if, and if we've taught something wrong to, to repent of that and to, to teach the truth, um, this is the worst kind of false witness is the false witness um, we give in the name of Jesus. And um, there's a lot of that going on. We can't, we can't attach Jesus to our train like, the, like a caboose. Yeah. And just for, I mean, that's, that's, that's violating this commandment. It's, it's lying about the character of Jesus. Jesus does not follow any of us <laughs> and what we want. He is the one leading and we follow him. Okay. And he says things that are hard for everybody in every generation. And so we need to have our ears open. And if he says something difficult, we need to believe it and follow it and um, not try to make it softer um, for, our, for our modern ears. So 344, what other acts are forbidden by this commandment? This commandment forbids all lying, slander, or gossip, all manipulative, deceitful, or insulting speech, and testifying falsely about myself for personal gain. Yeah, uh, gossip, that's that's a perennial problem in the life of the church. Um, yeah, that, that, and that and it is, it is not something that uh, the scriptures are happy about. Um, manipul manipulative speech. Um, you know, we don't cajole people, you know, into the truth. It doesn't work that way. You can't cajole into the truth. It needs to be, you know, we need to have our cards on the table. Um, testifying falsely about myself for personal gain. Dude. Okay. <laughs> uh, making myself look a lot better than I am so that I might get things that I want. Yeah, there, this has happened in several christian leaders right where they pad their cvs mm -hmm. and uh, they're not exactly being truthful about what they've done in the past and uh, there was a few of these instances and uh it caused me to go back to my cv and say am i being completely honest yeah and, uh, and even kind of under maybe just taking things out and being like you know it's it's okay for it to be maybe a, even a little less than what it actually was it's better than lying about it and trying to make it more <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. And and the thing I'd like to say here is like speaking the truth, it takes a cur it takes courage. Because it means that you have to be able to withstand pain. Mm -hmm. Whether that pain is an emotion of an emotional sort or a, even a 
even a, it could be, uh, yeah, mostly it's an emotional sort, even a physical sort, sort, you know, the early Christians had to testify often to the Lordship of Jesus and uh, were, were killed for it. Um, but for us today, it's mostly of an emotional sort. A person could lose their job for telling the truth. Um, a person, if you, if you, uh, a lot of the reasons we gossip is because we don't have the courage to go to that person and actually deal with the issue in truth. Yeah. And it's easier easier for us to offload that, that anxiety with someone else. And so um, it's really a call to courage here to speak the truth. And we don't need to get too much of the weeds on this, but insulting speech. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't need to tear down our brothers. That's, that's a bad thing. Part of this gets into our, the tongue and how difficult yeah. it is to tame the tongue, as James tells us. And the one who can tame the tongue is a, he says, a perfect person, a perfect man. <laughs> so um, like you said about fasting, I think last episode, if we can bring our speech into, the, into submission uh, of, of Christ, make him Lord of our speech, that also has an effect upon our entire person. That's mm -hmm. profound. Mm -hmm. So question 345, what sort of speech should you practice instead? I should speak at all times with love, wisdom, and truth, so that my words may honor God and comfort and encourage my neighbor. Hmm. Honoring God and comforting and encouraging my neighbor. We, we're, we're always going back to um, you know that summary of the law, right? loving God and loving your neighbor. And, and we, our speech is no different from the rest of life. Right. Yes. And, uh, you know, I've made it a practice to use this, the Jesus prayer often, um, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And when I find myself falling into patterns of self-talk or speech towards others, um, while I'm driving on I-35 that are not appropriate, <laughs> I go back to that. I make the decision. I'm going to call out to the Lord with my words to honor God. And in those words, also pray for myself and for others. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, 346. When is it right to speak of your neighbor's sin? I am forbidden to gossip or slander, but I must speak the truth in love, reporting crime, speaking against injustice, and advocating for the helpless, right? So the, yeah. the previous one was talking about comfort and encouragement, but truth doesn't always comfort and encourage. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, one of the things I, I see from time to time is um, s someone who is teaching false things, uh, you know, in, in, in the church world. Um, you know, maybe they're, advocating for immorality and pretending the scripture is okay with it or it's false doctrine or something like that they will say something publicly and then when they're called out on it publicly there's this there is this backlash that says well did you go to them privately first and that that's not the, that's not the same thing no. like like you know when when you're dealing with these with with um was it say, uh, you know, at, at, in, in, in this case, you know, calling that out is speaking the truth in love because it's love for all the people who would be deceived, right? It is highlighting this, um, you know, it, injustice against, against proper doctrine, right. um, advocating for the helpless, those that might not know better, you know, because they're, because they're not, they're not as theologically or doctrinally savvy um, that, that's important to do. Calling out false teaching is not gossip and slander. That's correct. That's correct. And also reporting crime, mm -hmm. or talking to a superior if 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 you've been abused in some way is mm -hmm. is also not gossip or slander. Um, if that that is um, important to do because there's often power differentials that make it impossible to deal with a person um, face to face. And that it, 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 there is a appropriate way to deal with with that um, through the through the proper channels of whether that be the government um, in cases of, of abuse or um, church leadership, um, getting friends to come around you to support you in that is really important. That's different than gossip or slander, because gossip or slander is happening when um, you can actually 
you, you, it is your responsibility and it is the right thing to actually go to that person and tell them the truth and deal right. with, with that person. That's where the gossip and slander is coming in. Um, so it's good to make a distinction between those things. Um, and then, yeah, we're called not only to speak the truth when it's comforting, when it's encouraging, but also to speak the truth when it's challenging. Yeah. And so um, the church has, especially leadership of the church, has a prophetic function in speaking about social events, whether it's um, talking to the governments of the world or things that are happening. There's a responsibility that we speak truth into that um, as well. So question 347, must you always speak the whole truth? To keep a confidence or to protect the innocence, I may at times need to withhold the whole truth, and I should always exercise discretion that my candor may not needlessly cause harm. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes we can mask um, <clears throat> being uncharitable um, and, and really just kind of being a jerk behind, well, I'm just telling the truth. And but you know you, using the truth as a weapon to bludgeon is is not within the spirit of this law. Right, that's correct. Love, love everything. The love brings everything together. Right, for the sake, for the good of the other, for the good of the community. Um, we always need to speak the truth, but that doesn't mean we need to speak all the truth we know. Uh, there's a lot of things, especially, gosh, as pastors, right. There's right. a lot of stuff we know that is completely inappropriate to be talking about. Um, yeah, we, we hold a lot of confidences, and we need to keep those confidences. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's it's also important to know that, that I mean, if you're, if you're in a particular um, situation, um, I don't know if we op want to open up this can of worms right now, but let's, I mean, let's do it. <laughs> we, Why not? We, we can edit it out if we need to, uh, but this will make it an extra lo long episode. Um, let's talk about pronouns for a second. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like the line for the Christian is we cannot lie. Right. Right. That's right. So if, if, uh, you know, there's someone who we know and we know that they are uh, a man and they are pretending to be a woman, then, um, we cannot call them uh, a she. Um, That's this right. would be lying. Um, lying that about the fundamental nature of reality that's all throughout scripture and all throughout nature. Um, however, it doesn't mean that we need, to, it, it's a, I believe it's a different thing to um, simply use their name. Let's say if you're in a work context and you would get fired, which is, I know people who are in work contexts and they would get fired for um, calling that person a he or him. You can simply call them by their, by their name, for example. Now that's not speaking the whole truth, but um, it's not lying either. And I think that we need to be very clear that as Christians, yes, we we cannot we cannot lie. We cannot. That's where that's where the that's where the line is. But yeah, I think about um, there's there were some reports of some um, you know high school teachers or college professors that in light of all this to to keep from lying. <laughs> They just okay. Well, my my policy from here out is I'll just refer to everybody by the, by their last name, um, you know, rather than a you know a new assumed name or or um, you know preferred pronouns that are really as you said lies. Um, and, and I think that that's that's a good policy in that context. Um, does it always satisfy the people that are trying to promote the lie? No. Not usually. No. But that's but but that's that at that point that's their problem, right? I mean. That's that's you know you've you've done you you you've done the the best accommodation without um, without lying <laughs> you can in the you know in the case of those professors or, or those and teachers. It's important for us to know where that line is. Yeah, yeah. That we're because if you take this stand, you will pay. Right, there will be a payment that will be exacted upon you by those that are in power. But if you are standing up for the truth. Right. You will be rewarded more than you can imagine by our Heavenly Father. And what you're doing is you're actually um, speaking the truth in love, and that is good um, for everyone involved. Right? There, is nothing, there is nothing good about reinforcing a lie in someone's life, whether that's 
um, some sort of body dysmorphia or, or any other sort of lie that they're believing. Reinforcing a lie is not good for them. Um, and so that's where the line is. Yes, you're in, if you're in one of these difficult situations in a corporation, just use last name, um, just call them by their name, whatever. But don't, don't lie. That's where, the, that's where the line is. And if, in your, if you're in one of these situations, uh, my, my advice to you is to really pray about this and make sure that, you're, that you get your heart ready and know these different situations that may come up. Um, talk to your pastor. Make sure you have uh, brothers and sisters around you who are supporting you in this that can give you advice real time when things like this happen so that you're prepared. Yeah, absolutely. 348, how does keeping this commandment help you become like Christ? By practicing love and truthfulness in speech, I grow in self-restraint, kindness, and honesty, so that I may know God with a mind free of deception, praise Him with an undefiled tongue, and more truly love my neighbor. Yeah, I like these three things we grow in, self-restraint, kindness, and honesty. Um, they, they might not seem like the things that go together super natural, you know, or, or naturally they don't seem to necessarily be the things that are closest together, but, um, supernaturally, they really are all part of the same, 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 uh, same picture. Um, and, and it, and it does boil down to, in all three of these things, taming the tongue as St. James says. I, yes. I feel like all of these things, it's like a guitar a guitar um, string that is tuned properly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good analogy. I like that. It's like when our life is according to the truth so that our speech, our beliefs, our actions are all aligned to that objective note of truth, man, our lives resonate. Mm -hmm. They resonate. It, 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 there's something that even in difficult times, there's something that just feels good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like even in the stress, even in the stressful times, you, like, yeah, there's all that stress, but down deep down, you're like, ah, oh, I, I know I'm standing on the truth. I know I'm resonating with, with the reality of the universe that is, that is found in God through Christ. And, um, and that's a treasure that's not worth giving up. Yeah. And, and I, I really appreciate how it includes the mind free of deception as as our tongue is um, disciplined against deception, it also helps to have a mind. It helps create a mind that is free of deception. Yes, we are. It's a beautiful thing about how we're made. We are made to know truth. That's right. We are made to know truth. So we're living into our calling when we seek truth and we find it. Find him. Amen. Yes. Yes. Thank you for joining us for Anglican Catechesis where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a comment below. You can also take Anglican Catechesis with you on the go by subscribing to the podcast. You can find the link in the YouTube description. Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.